Sunday, October 4th, 2020, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast, with Disturbing Length, episode number 572. And this month, we have everything correct. We didn't time travel. <laughs> Anyways. I was, I was not ready for golf claps. That was nice. <laughs> You're welcome. Is anyone ever really prepared for golf claps? No. When I mean, is that like golf? Golfing. Yeah. <laughs> Although even golf, they would be expecting golf claps considering there's no one there to do the golf clapping. Except for like... Yeah. The, the, the thing, people that are supposed to be there. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> Moving on, let's... Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, Owen is making waves again. Uh, let's get right into this. Tokusatsu Gale Uitsuku. I tried this. Really. Uh, I, I, I practiced this, but I hadn't practiced it right before. But I said, Tokusatsu Gale Uitsuku. Mm -hmm. Which means tokusatsu ketchup. Uh, tokusatsu is a type of uh, Japanese uh, drama, usually involving uh, video effects and such, such as what we here here refer to as Power Rangers, but it's the actual real thing that Power Rangers uh, basically ganked footage from, uh, like Super Sentai. Also, if you remember Mask Rider. Kamen Rider, and various other shows. I'm along the lines of Super Sentai and Kamen Rider, so I'm catch up with the actual real stuff, which Saban is just, you know, tearing to shreds. Although I do have to say, I really did like Dino Thunder. I thought that was very well done. But that's beside the point. I've been catching up on it. Uh, finished up Lupin vs. Pat, uh, which was... Uh, Two seasons ago, watched all of Rio Soldier, so uh, Rio Soldier, and I'm currently watching Q Major. Which, if you were in the the Telegram chat, you would have seen what their their post roll call. You know, they 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 do their transformation, and then they do like Kitter me red, Kitter me blue, Kitter me yellow, that sort of thing. Uh, and and then they strike a pose when they do. Um, uh, Machine think tank, gear major. Well, normally it's like the the three of them and then they do some sort of like pose thing. Well, in this series, they have they do ballet poses. <laughs> and and like blue and yellow pick up green and pink. <laughs> it's it's really awkward and weird, and I'm like Something weird and odd coming from Japan. Wow. I mean, well, well, well this, the entire series is kind of giving me. Well, a lot of people have been comparing it to to like uh, comparing it to uh, Magirator, which I can see how they're how they they are getting that because it's like they're 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 non the tension the uh, 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 uniforms uh, before they transform and. Uh, uh, and they, there's and it, all this like magic. I mean, it's major instead of like ranger. It's major. It's kind of like the base to it. So there, there's kind of that. But the the silliness, the thing with like like sparkling. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it, it all is like this pretty pretty sunshine thing. There's lots of thing uh, that I'm thinking more along the lines of Tokyuger. Which is very silly. It is about like the power through imagination, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I ended up really liking Tokyo. You know, it, it was like 
this is really, really, really silly to begin with. But then I'm kind of like, oh, this is getting charm charming. And uh, But here it's kind of like a, a little mixed bag because it's actually kind of cool. But it's that that pose is what what i just don't like about it <laughs> anyways uh and then i've been uh that i got through all the zero one and i haven't started saber yet because i'm going to finish catching up on uh commander right saber so i'm catching up on gear major and then i'm going to watch the four episodes of um um coming right saber so that's, and then I re-downloaded part of, uh, uh, Gokaiger and, uh, 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 Kia Cause I, I kind of, I, I'm kind of, because Rio Soldier kind of reminded me of Kia Ruger and I like that better. Mm. And so I'm kind of like getting like nostalgia things and kind of rewatch part of that video thing for fun. Mm -hmm. And plus I kind of miss Gokaiger. Kokaiju was like one of my favorite Sentais. I like a lot of the Sentais. Like Geki Ranger is one of my favorites, and, and Major Ranger is actually really, really good. So, which also made me kind of realize maybe I should learn Japanese. Maybe. Anyway, more D and D stuff like that. Yay! I know it's absolutely failing. A lot of casseroles. Chili. That's Go on. <laughs> I, mean, I can't that... relate to the, to the Japanese TV show like type stuff, but you were like lots of casseroles, and I was like, okay. Yeah, it's mostly like the, bis <laughs> the biscuits and gravy casserole. Uh, I basically every time I'm getting groceries, I get the ingredients for that, so I can make it again. Because I really like it. Um, uh, uh, I also found a really good tater tot casserole recipe, which include which involves uh, uh, besides tater tots, uh, uh, like uh, uh, beef and enchilada sauce and uh, taco seasoning. Um, so it's really good too. And just kind of like trying some stuff out. All recipes uh, all recipes dot com. Also trying to figure out the best way to get my favorite version of my my uh, uh, easy bees easy cheesy chicken bake, which is based off of a recipe from Kraft for the. Um, but instead of just plain broccoli florets, I use mixed vegetables. That's mm. mostly what the difference is. Huh. Had to be a little concerned with some of the water content and some of the other vegetables, though. I make it a little watery. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 I like it for how it is, but it's fine. I'm just, I'm just thinking. Out but I, I've always used the mixed vegetables instead of, instead of the, the just straight broccoli. So. Mm. Okay. So it's how I think of it, but it, because I usually use a, a cream of chicken and mushroom. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, ordering ordering it because I'm j basically instead of grocery shopping, I just use Instacart because I'm lazy. Ah. I have to deal with the whole like mask figuring out social distancing and try that because I'm one who's really spastic at a. Uh, at a grocery store, and I will go from one insert store and back the other because I forgot something. <laughs> Instead of just like re 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 work through and then into the checkout, it's like work through. Remember, I forgot something that's in a previous aisle, so I go back there, and then I'm like, oh wait a minute, I could also get this. So I go over to another spot, and I'm just like all over the place. So instead of dealing with that, I pick up my groceries, I order it on Instacart, I have it delivered. And then there's things like I order it at that night expecting like some time the next day to, to get it. And instead they deliver it before I even wake up, which I have mixed feelings for. <laughs> but why do you have mixed feelings? 
because usually when they're doing the shopping they they have a chat and like they'll be like hey this they're uh looking to uh swap out this and this do you approve approve uh, or, or they'll be like, "Hey, I can't get this. Do you, which one do you really want for your thing?" Or they'll, they'll ask some things. So there's some interaction there. There, I like it when they're doing that. Okay. Uh, uh, but if I'm not even awake, and they, they do the shop and deliver it, don't get me wrong, I love it. I go to sleep. I wake up. There's groceries at my door. Door. Very convenient. Very, you know quick and easy and I don't have to worry about anything except if they don't quite get when I ordered 48 ounces of, of tomatoes I wanted 48 ounces of tomatoes even if you have to get it in smaller cans <laughs> instead of the two big ones go with the smaller ones okay but that could also be a logist a, a thing where it's like we can only swap one and one if they don't have the larger size, we're going to go with the smaller size. And we're only getting one of the size because you only ordered one. But because of volume, it thing, it's, there's a lots of issues. Okay. And especially when I'm like, hey, if you can't find this this type, go with this type. But they go with the other type, but they don't say they replaced it from what I originally ordered. <laughs> So the, the replacements was there was replacements with the issues. I like being able to like chat with the the person. I don't bug them or anything. It's just if they need to know something or I'm watching that if they're doing a replacement for something, I can easily mm -hmm. approve, make comments about it and and before they're done shopping, they yes. can get what I really want. So. Are they all guess... the question what? Yeah, I mean, I, I've never used the service, so what you're describing makes sense to me, but then it's annoying me greatly. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, no. Like, either I go into the store myself and I buy my own shit, or I order it, like, through the store for pickup, I guess, mm. to avoid the whole, like, swapping issue where you know, because it's like, no, 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 you, I ordered it through you. You listed online. You said you had it in stock. That's how simple that is. Yeah. Oh, Gary. <laughs> if only it yeah. were that simple. I know, I know, I know. As I have learned from Kim, as he's been doing a lot of the grocery shopping online um, and picking it up at the store, yeah, they swap things out all the time if they're out of it. It may be in stock, like, online, but immediately, like, someone can come in and buy all of it, and then it's gone. So, yeah. Yeah. So, it happens. It happens all the time. Yeah. I, it, and I almost kind of wish there was, like, a partnership between all recipes and, and Instacart. <laughs> so I could, I could select the recipes that I want, and then it would automatically order the ingredients for that recipe. Which is basically what I'm doing. I pull up my stuff in all recipes. These I create a shopping list on there, and then I just like match them. Uh, and then I think of other yeah. things like like oh hey I need to make sure to have bread. I want some. I want, I, I want some jelly because I want to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or something like that. So yeah. some things that I don't necessarily need for a casserole recipe, but I also made my own beef stroganoff. Mm. Which which I actually thoroughly enjoyed the base recipe. Mm. Although a lot of people kept saying I change this, I change this, I change this on the reviews. And there's a whole bunch of it, and I'm like, mm, I tried it the way they said, and it was fine, except for the fact that I, for, that I initially forgot to to put the cream the cream cheese in before before I started serving. And I already put a ladle <laughs> to beat stroke it off. Oh, because you put that in last, and like like melt that in uh, like right before you start serving mm -hmm. so you don't actually really cook it with the, the regular stuff but... uh -huh. so that was fun. anyways that's my food adventures damon how about you Ooh. um so i wrote down friendly visits and a change for fall um i have been 
slowly opening up in regards to um, social distancing with friends and having people over. Um, we have um, every other week um, a friend of a couple of friend, a couple who is friends of ours that comes over and we have dinner of some kind. We usually just hang out. Sometimes we'll play video or video games, board games and stuff, but we mostly just kind of relax and talk and um, hang out, which is always cool. We actually, the other day, I think Friday, yeah, past Friday, um, um, we had two of our um, um, a lesbian couple that we've known for a while um, who are moving from their current home to a home closer to us um, in the near future. And we just had them over and we had like some dessert and just, you know, it was it was nice to just catch up. Like, you know, you're talking about with your your Power Rangers or your Sentais. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good to catch up with people because you haven't really had an opportunity to talk with people a lot recently, um, especially in person. Like, yes, you could video chat, you can talk with people that way or you can chat with each other via text messaging, but it's totally different than just like actually just sitting and talking. Now, we didn't like do like hugs and all that stuff, but we kind of kept our distance and, you know, we talked for a while. We were at the table here and it was, it was nice. Um, I actually had a um, meet up with another friend of mine um, who um, we ended up meeting actually outside on the porch. Um, It was a warmer day. It was pretty decent and um, and more because I know she has um, an 80 plus year old mother that she takes care of every once in a while. So I figured that would be a little bit better just in case. Um, but you know, it's been, it's been nice. It has been nice to like actually have conversations with people face to face, you know, even though there's small little events for, um, this time of year. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe more, but still keeping things a little lax, not not lax, but a little restricted for now. Um, I think, I don't know what else we'll do for that um, for now anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, and the other thing I did kind of in regards to that same stream of like relaxing regards to um, COVID and pandemic and stuff is um, I got my hair cut. (laughs) Yay. So... It has been, I know I wrote a post on Facebook. It's, I said it's been almost seven months, but actually the last time I cut my hair was right before um, NAB. So it was February when I got my hair cut last. Oh, wow. um, so we're looking at eight months. Um, so yeah, so um, it was, it was, it was due. It was nice. Um, the problem, like I'm wearing, you can see I'm wearing my rag that I've been wearing for a while. Um, the main reason I'm doing it now is because my head is cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, the 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 barbershop was really nice. Um, it was the one I've always gone to, and they they had set up appointments, but um, my barber was proving like like don't use the 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 online like application because it doesn't really give you. Like, I don't know what they, I don't know how they have it set up, but it's not right. So it, I had my appointment at one, but he has someone also with an, a, like checked in at one or not at one, but it was there early. So he was running behind. So I ended up, fortunately there was a little coffee shop around a corner um, across from the shop. So I went there and had a coffee before um, he called me, but he called me and now I have his number. And he's like, just call me um, when you, want to come back and get a another appointment so i'm like cool i'll do that i'll probably do both because i'm you know like that mm-hmm. so but Couple um bases. yeah yeah and you know they're definitely like keeping it you literally come in when you're getting your hair cut and then you have a mask on they take your temperature they, they check you in you sit in the chair you can take your mask off when you're in the chair and they keep a mask on and then they cut your hair and then when you're done, you kind of have to go because there's not really a place to sit and lounge. They've taken out all of the, the um, well, they've taken out all of the um, 
like when when I used to go, there were like sort of couches. Yeah, there were couches mm-hmm. kind of thing, like waiting for because you know traditional black barbershops, you can you're there, like you're there all day sometimes. Well, Depending so that's busy, why that's why I <laughs> chuckled, David, when you were like, "It would you get your hair cut? You're done. You get the fuck out." Like, yeah. I was <laughs> laughing because I was like, "Oh yeah, if." If media, if representation of a black mm-hmm. barbershop is to be true, yeah. it is a community center of sorts for, mm-hmm. so, you know, there's lots of talking, catching up, newspaper mm-hmm. reading, if people still read a newspaper. Um, you know, yeah. You know, so, I mean, it becomes a hub of things, both, I imagine, salons and barbershops, mm-hmm. um, you know, within the African American community. So when you said you were like, oh, there are no chairs, like you just, and I was yeah. like, well, yeah, that yeah. would be the change. The only, the only chairs really are the ones that are being used by the barbers. So the barber chairs, that's the only ones that are there. Um, and then, like I, you know, paid and, um, I'm sure they probably put them <laughs> in storage. Being like, okay, it's we want to make sure that that no one is enticed to to stay. Yeah. So we're gonna like put them in storage so they don't have a place to sit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like and, it, and loiter. Yeah, so lack of and memory. like, yeah. and like, I mean, on like, because uh, I got there for my actual appointment and I had to wait. They're like, you can't, you can't wait inside. Like, even though I had an appointment, I'm just like putting it out there. I had an appointment. And he wasn't ready, so I couldn't like wait in the space. I had to wait outside. Um, And one guy came in, he had called in, he didn't have an appointment, but he did show up and he had to wait outside until his uh, guy was ready to take him on. So that's sort of the thing now. And I do appreciate that, you know, it's the same thing, kind of like what we're dealing with in general is like, you can't really you have to be careful with who and what you're um, around and yeah. who you know, and it's a kind of a way to protect yourself. Yeah, so, they're not trying to be uh, rude. They're trying to oh, yeah. protect their clientele. Oh, yeah. Because they want and, you and to the, be able to come back because if you're dead, hey, you're not going to come back. Exactly. exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, it was nice to get my hair done because, I, like I said, it had been several months and there was thoughts about maybe doing something with my hair. Um, I thought about um, actually um, like dyeing it or something along those lines. Just something fun because, you know, we're quarantined. Like, you know, but the fact of the matter is, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I am lazy AF. Mm -hmm. Um, And getting up pretty much every morning, doing something with my hair um, and having to do something with my hair was an ordeal and it's not just like you know putting a comb through it and you're good like I have to detangle and (laughs) I had to anyway had to detangle and you know put like sometimes I would do styling stuff but not a whole lot and and all of that and it just takes a lot of time and I'm glad I'm not I'm working from home (laughs) because um I don't have to rush to get to a bus like that's one big thing so mm-hmm. um so that's kind of was my fact like my idea was like as much as i want to maybe do something fun with this hair that i've been growing out for eight months now almost i i it, it was it was time um especially with the fall and everything else so yeah that's pretty much me gary because <laughs> I've been opening up, you have not. Are you here no longer? <laughs> oh, okay. I think I understand what you meant by that. I was like, wait, what? Um, yeah, quarantine. Let's talk about it, shall we? Mm-hmm. Let's so talk about quarantine. Yeah. Uh, For those that may not know, or for some reason be aware, uh, because I guess that's possible in today's day and age. Um, So there is a worldwide pandemic going on with this thing (laughs) called coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. Coronavirus! (laughs) Sorry. That's all right. And I um, have been very busy with work. 
uh, with this. In fact, it's gotten busier just this past week, which is annoying. Um, <laughs> I mean, and and let me let me uh, have a moment to complain about my privilege. I guess is the oh. way I want to put it. Well, no, because like you know, I I work a job that is really good in terms of its um, benefits. Mm -hmm. And so I my normal work week, <laughs> which has not happened in uh, over half a year, <laughs> um, seven, eight months, maybe now um, a normal work week for me is 37 and a half hours. And that's it. Mm -hmm. um, this past week, however, though, um, I worked that and then. I think an additional six or seven hours beyond all of that. And I worked almost 10 hours yesterday. Oh, oh, wow. So for the week, I put in roughly 16 extra hours, 17 extra hours. So th for other people, that would be like a 40 hour work week plus another like 13. Mm hmm. Something like that. So, uh, yeah. This, this past week, um, things got rather busy for work because uh, cases are on the rise. People are not staying home, and they be spreading it around. So I have now become a representation of that in a way uh, as a quinky dink. A couple weekends ago, I went down to Cincinnati, and I hung out with Jeff and Ronnie, who I, you know, have talked about before. They are my, uh, they, my besties, and you've met them, Damon. You know them. Yeah. So I go down. I was there Labor Day weekend, and I went back two weekends later um, to kind of get away and clear my head because uh, I'll talk about it probably at a later time when I have more of a concrete thing to say about what's happening with my dad. But so a bunch of changes are taking place, and this month's going to be <laughs> – this month's supposed to be very busy in dealing mm -hmm. with a bunch of that. So I was like, you know what? I have like seven weeks until November. You know, I'll like take a break, go down, visit them for the weekend, you know, get away. And my dog daughter, their their dog Zoe, had just had a big surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to, you know, be able to see her and stuff. So I went down for the weekend and I get down there on Friday night and Jeff and I are sitting there on the couch and we're talking and he gets a text message and he reads it. I mean, but he gets, you know, like all of us, you're on your devices, you get messages all the time. But this time he goes, oh no. And I said, what's going on? And he goes, well, someone I know that I've been in close contact with just informed me that they have COVID. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> right. Oh shit. And he's like, yeah. Uh, and whose house is that? David, is that your house or is that? No. No, I did. Oh, the sirens? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's me. Okay. Um... I, I got, I got my, I, I'm trying to, to use the natural air to keep my apartment cool. No, that's fine. I was just it. like, dang, like, <laughs> like there's a fire or something going on. Um, so Jeff then is like processing the fact that he is now what we call a contact of an index. Mm -hmm. And he's now worried because if he has gotten it, then he's exposing it to the two of us, his husband and me. Uh, so that I try explaining to him the concept of what's called a contact of a contact and that we don't really get, you know, involved or concerned about that because um, the spread of the disease is like, it's only to the first circle out, basically. So it's from the index to the next ring, as we say. Like, if you kind of think about, like, um, like on a tree, like the rings of a tree stump or, like, an mm -hmm. onion if you cut it in half. So, like, the index is the very center, and then the contact or the contacts are the very first level out. Everything beyond that, all the other rings we don't care about because they're too far removed, potential for mm -hmm. spread. So it's only the very first level, so to speak, the first ring to come. So I said, okay, so this person that you know has informed you. So now you are a contact of that. I was like, so you'll have to, you know, stay home or, you know, or, or whatever, okay. depending on what the circumstance is. So anyways, um, so he went and got a test at the local uh, pharmacy the next day with a major chain. Um, 
just to like, you know, get a swap and see how things go. The whole rest of the weekend, we hug out. Things were fine. He was good. I left and came home on Sunday. Uh, unbeknownst to me, after I left, he started to not feel well. Oh, no. While he was out doing yard work and stuff, he developed a cough and some stuff. So uh, Monday, he oh, yeah. uh, okay, didn't feel it. well, went to work to talk to his boss. So they stood outside in the parking lot with masks on and had a conversation. <laughs> Uh-huh. And his boss was like, you're not coming into work. Bye, go home. <laughs> so he went home, uh, didn't feel good on Monday. Basically, by Monday night, felt like he got hit by a Mack truck, as he says. Tuesday was so bad, he had his husband take him to the uh, VA hospital mm-hmm. to get dropped off. And they um, they swabbed him for influenza and cleared him. Uh, so it wasn't the flu. And all the rest of his vitals were fine. They were like... We'll let you know about your COVID test uh, a little bit. So he had two swabs done, one on Saturday and one on Tuesday. He gets home. The one on Saturday comes in as negative. But mm-hmm. the one earlier that day from the VA, within about a half an hour, they call him and they tell him that it's positive. Oh, wow. So in contact tracing, when you work it backwards by 48 hours from start of symptoms, I am now a contact of an index because Jeff – has been confirmed as positive. So he is the index and now I am a contact. So on my way home on Sunday, I sent a work email letting my team members know and my boss and my boss's boss, this is the situation. Uh, Should I or should I not come into work tomorrow? Um, And my boss's boss said, there's a lot of ifs in this scenario (laughs) because we didn't know anything yet. Um, Like I said, I was a contact of a contact. So they were like, go ahead and come in. (laughs) But on Tuesday, while I'm at work, (laughs) as the day's wrapping up, Jeff texts me and he's like, I tested positive. I said, okay, thank you. (laughs) So (laughs) that I let my boss's boss know. And they said, you get to go home and work from home. Yay. So that's what I've been doing. (laughs) And being being at the the place where where you work, you said, said, this is the case and they're like yep you go home there's no yeah. argument no nothing they're just like go home yeah. well and well to be fair you know my boss's boss had said do you do you need anything do you have everything you need to work from home and i was like no i've already got the work laptop in fact i'm gonna pack it when i leave today because it was in just a moment ago doing an update on it um that was needed so you know about the only thing that i really grabbed from my office that i wanted to bring home was my fleece um, you know, jacket kind of deal. And that was about it. I mean, I grabbed, you know, the laptop and the rest of the stuff, but I already have the the spare things on my other desk over there. So mm-hmm. I have been working from home since then. Uh, so I worked Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then took last weekend off and then worked Monday through Saturday this week because cases have been on the rise. Um, mm-hmm. Schools are back in session, sporting activities. Those are like the big cluster issues yeah. we're seeing right now. Yeah. So I've been waiting because I contacted my PCP and said, hey, I'm a contact of an index for COVID. I need to get a test. And I had said in my message on the app that I had been in Ohio and they were like, are you still in Ohio? And I was like, no, I'm in Erie. Do you have symptoms? No, but my employer would like me to go get tested. (laughs) So... They tell me they wrote the script and they submitted it and I should get a phone call in a day or two. They said they are a little behind, so don't worry if you don't hear anything for a a day or so. Okay. Five days goes by. Oh my God, fuck you. Right, no no (laughs) schedule for the swab. So then I message my PCP's office and they're like, that's weird, you really should have been contacted by now. Go ahead and call this number. So I call the number and this is like a day or two after that and it's a scheduling operator service or something. They don't know why I'm calling. They call my PCP's office. Then they transfer me. My PCP office doesn't know why I'm being transferred to them. They try to, uh, you know, find out why I didn't get called. And then here's the big discovery. Because I don't have symptoms, I'm not going to get a scheduled test. So... I try not to lose my shit on the phone. (laughs) (laughs) Like I'm losing my shit right now. (laughs) Fucking A. So I said to to the woman, um, so uh, I said, so this is against CDC guidelines because it clearly (laughs) says 
people who have been in direct contact, close contact of less than six feet for more than 15 minutes should get tested. So you're going against that as a network, as a, as a healthcare network. And you know, also our state's, you know, Department of Health has clearly said that this is, you know, the expectation, the guideline. And the woman said to me, this is by the powers that be above me. And I, I was like, okay. She's like, I'm going to have a manager call you back. That was Thursday. It is now Sunday, and I have yet to talk to Ashley, the manager. Mm. So somebody's get to call on Monday. <laughs> so and it's not I, me. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I called my boss's boss at work on Thursday and said, "Hey, this is what I'm dealing with, and I would like some guidance on this because." I'm not I'm not one of those people that likes to go, hey, you know, like, here's my fucking business card, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just don't want to throw my title and my weight around. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, I'm <laughs> feeling a little put out. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lloyd, Damon's basically that. emoting exactly Damn. what I'm feeling, but I'm <laughs> one who just doesn't really do that emotion, that, that emoting. Yeah. So well, Damon's welcome. doing the emoting for both me and Damon. So yeah. So if you're, you're wondering how I'm feeling, Damon, Damon's showing it. Yeah. There you go. Just, just, so, just want to put that out there. So I said to her, to them, I, I don't understand why I'm being denied to get a scheduled appointment, and they reminded me that I could go to a local pharmacy, you know, and set up my own appointment and I wouldn't, there wouldn't be any charge. And I was like, I'm aware of that. Everyone's been telling me that that's not the point. <laughs> a script was requested. It was submitted and it is not being fulfilled. What gives, that like, I said, you know, I said, that's the part that's like, you know, really surprising me. And so, um, later, uh, Word got around me unofficially. Little birdies had said that there may be a supply chain issue mm -hmm. for testing supplies, and that may be part of the reason that asymptomatics, meaning people who do not have symptoms, are not being provided with appointments. Mm -hmm. To which my thought is, y'all should just say it. Like you should just say, we're yes. unsure if we can handle people who don't have symptoms right now. So please use these other options. Yeah. Like you can find a politically that. correct way. Like you can find a uh, PR uh -huh. way to handle it. But no, like you're just. Yeah. Just not calling people. Well, you're like, just right. Well, you're not calling people fuck and then you're not explaining noise. yourself. Like, it, it, so, sometimes like, just you? saying the truth in a, in a nice way. I'm sorry. We, we're having some some supply issues for these tests so at this time we're currently do we're currently only doing symptomatic people right uh i recommend that you would then use these other options in order to fulfill <laughs> well and, mm -hmm. and just be apologize for the inconvenience and honestly I, if they if they just went out and said basically the truth just yep. nicely i gave an apology that that was the case yeah, it may not be yeah. a Paul. It's more, more of a symptomatic, uh, symp sympathetic apology. I'm good with right. sympathetic mm -hmm. apologies, by the way. <laughs> you know, if it's if it, if it's not your fault, but you still say you're sorry, it means you understand you you you're this frustrate. You understand my frustration. You're being sympathetic with me. I appreciate that. Uh, sympathetic, empathetic, whatever you want to call it, call it. If you're telling me the truth about what's going on and why you would not be able to fulfill these requirements that are required what, by the CDC and the Department of Health of the fucking state, then you can act. Then I'm okay. Bad. It's it's Bad. fine. Just just the truth. You don't have to lie. You don't have to beat around the bush because you just we can't schedule you right now, so we're just not going to call you. <laughs> It's it's a hey we got this we can't fulfill it right now because of these issues and these are the issues and we can under, it, but we do there are these other options in order to fulfill what you're looking for because that sometimes <laughs> the truth doesn't hurt <laughs> actually it's uh, it it the truth actually can help set you free and actually show you positive results. 
I'm just going to be honest right now, point blank period, bitch, you messing with my money. Like, because I, I, I can't go back to work until I get a test. So give me my well, fucking <laughs> test. <laughs> like, I'm no. not, I mean, I, like, I, 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 I think right. you can work from home, Gary, but like, and I, like, I could work from home. And right. you know, I can work but from like, home. Yeah, but imagine if you can't. Correct, correct, right. And that was really part of my beef about this whole issue is uh, like, I'm blessed to have a job and to have a job that's letting me work from home. So while mm -hmm. I'm in quarantine, I'm not put out by mm -hmm. not being able to work. Oh, and it gets better. My okay. position is not covered by the COVID money if you get, if you get forced to not work because of COVID. Mm. Like specifically our jobs at the health department are not covered. Mm. Like it's written in the law and it had to be pursued and we had to get clarification. We're not actually covered by that. Wow. Which, oh yeah. It's messy. So it was funny because my boss's boss did say to me and remember, and then stopped themselves and said, Oh wait, no, that's right. That changed. We're not covered by that. Well, you're going to be working from home anyways. I was like, right. It's I'm not being put out. Yeah, but other Thank people would that. Be. So, yeah. in the meantime, I went ahead, scheduled my own appointment for on Friday morning to go get to do the swab at a drive-through locally. I'm waiting okay. for the test results. This is where it gets even more interesting. So, I get to stay and continue working from home until the test result comes in. If it's negative, then the next day I can go back to working in my office at the building. Mm hmm. If it's positive, which means I become an asymptomatic COVID index, in other words, an asymptomatic carrier, which means I'm positive for the virus, but we don't know when exactly I have it and when exactly I'm shedding mm -hmm. to give other virus, then I get to stay home for another 10 days since the test. Oh, my God, honey. Yeah. Uh-huh. So... <laughs> Monday, tomorrow, or Tuesday, I get to find out whether or not I get to go back to work in the building or if my ass is staying home for like another well, uh, just a week. Wow. So, yeah. So there you go. So that's the thing. So, but, like, so FYI, people, like, like several things that happened. Gary literally knows who he potentially got his COVID contact from. Like, just, I'm just putting this out there. Right. Like he knows specifically who he got his contact from because they got theirs from someone mm -hmm. who then called that person and told them. So you got to understand those links in the chain. Like, that's my big thing. If Gary is positive and he said he's asymptomatic, then, like, he doesn't, he wouldn't know he had it until the links in the chain had made themselves known. If that makes sense, right? Right. Like, so, so the presumption will be if it comes back positive, that it came from Jeff. Yeah, but that's still not a a known mm -hmm. thing with certainty because this is the very first test I've had all all pandemic. We're mm -hmm. not we're not we're not provided the tests automatically at like where I work, which I know sounds crazy as as you know what, well, but we're well. not we're not a, we, while we are essential, we are not front line. Yeah. So, like, I'm not working in a medical facility, even though we have a mm -hmm. clinic. We've sh pretty much shut down the clinic, ninety-eight percent. Mm -hmm. Like, we have we have we have a clinic rooms, actual exam rooms, and normally we have clinic running like three, four days a week, and all of that has pretty much been shut down since March. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's just like one thing that's sort of still open, and it's purely because um, it's for TB for tuberculosis, which is something you absolutely have to address. Mm -hmm. um, and our program will cover services, but we have to provide them. A lot of the other stuff we've been sending people, we've been networking with others. So like for the STI stuff that we do that I'm involved in, we send people to other two or three other entities locally to get their testing done mm. and their services. So like, like things are still being covered locally. It's just not necessarily through us. So, um, yeah, like, like we just never, you know, and if you wanted to have your own test, theoretically you weren't supposed to be able to get one unless you were exposed or you paid out of pocket so or you could i mean your insurance should cover it but in order for insurance to cover it there should be a script but for there to be a script your doctor has to write it the doctor has to understand why you want the test see what i mean so like 
the whole thing just kind of like swirls yeah, yeah. itself around. Um, so yeah, like we're we're kind of waiting now to go back to Jeff. Just for anybody who's wondering and isn't connected and friends, um, Jeff had gone to like I said the VA on Tuesday, came home, and was told later that day that he was positive, and that he therefore had to isolate. Um, you know, with, uh, Ronnie being there. So both of them have not been working since then, um, because of this. And then over as the week went on, he, Jeff kind of felt bad. Then he felt a little better Then he developed a cough and the cough wouldn't go away. So over last weekend, he told Ronnie, he's like, you got to take me back. He's like, there's, it's just not good. Um, and so he went back to the VA and they admitted him. And mm-hmm. they confirmed that he had COVID pneumonia. Mm-hmm. So pneumonia in and of itself, you know, obviously exists, but COVID makes you much more susceptible to pneumonia, yeah, um, which impacts your lungs and all that. So Jeff got admitted for about two days. Most individuals on average who get COVID pneumonia and when they get admitted to the hospital don't necessarily bounce right back out. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be three, four, five days depending. I mean, there's, you know, comorbidities is what we talk about a lot. Like what are your other health complications? Um, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, cancer, you know, immunosuppressed, uh, stuff. There's, there's a whole laundry list of things that can affect you. So, um, Jeff was actually released after two days to go home with oxygen, um, to have an oxygen concentrator. Uh, he initially was told that he should, you know, pretty much have it most of the time. Um, but he was gifted uh, by another friend of ours, a pulse oximeter, which is what measures the oxygen in your blood. And he uh, was able to maintain 94% on room air, as we say, which means he wasn't using uh, the machine or uh, oxygen tank or anything. So uh, he's been pretty consistent at that. He's very tired a lot, which I talk to him almost every day or every other day um, just to check in with him and stuff. And so that's, you know, kind of where they're at like he's in recovery um it's going to be a while um it's uh not the best thing in the world because he's a singer in multiple bands <laughs> um he has three different bands plus his own separate acoustic thing he does and all of his gigs he can't really keep at the moment mm-hmm. and unfortunately the month of october is very busy mm-hmm. so uh he's already had to cancel a couple of them he's just going to play it by ear as the time goes by and see how he's feeling and how he's doing. Um, but yeah. So uh, that's COVID at home, so to speak. <laughs> um, I've been fine. I have not had any symptoms the entire time. Um, and to my knowledge, Ronnie's pretty much okay too. So now uh, if Ronnie does end up developing symptoms or comes up as positive, I'm not going to be surprised at all because they live together in the same house. Like, yeah. Technically, with Jeff um, being positive, they should do what's called isolation, which means he would stay in his own room. Um, Their house has multiple bathrooms, so it would be possible for him to just, like, stay in his bedroom all the time and use the bathroom that's connected to it and not go anywhere, not do anything for at least the 10 days. Mm -hmm. And the whole reason for an isolation or quarantine period is to allow the body, if medical intervention isn't needed, meaning you don't have to go to the hospital, to just run its course so that eventually your body your immune system overcomes the virus mm-hmm. but that's usually why you end up spiking a fever you have like chills you know these other uh symptoms about which is you know your your defense is trying to fight it off and then the window of time is to allow you to stop shedding the virus to infect anybody and then you kind of go about your life from there mm-hmm. so um you know when you're already known positive the window is shorter because um you know, we can work off of that. But when it's an unknown, the days get expanded from 10 to 14 just as a buffer. Mm-hmm. So my my cousin on uh, Facebook has been reading about my posts and stuff and actually commented and said, you know, do you need a negative test to return to work? Which I thought was a great question because we've been dealing with this all pandemic long. Some employers are requiring, if not one negative test, two negative tests before the mm-hmm. person, the employee can go back to work. Yeah. Now, uh, the hitch with that is when your body stops popping positive for a COVID test is unique to your body. So while you may have been long since like out of symptoms, you might still keep coming up positive for weeks to a month or two 
until the body overcomes the virus and then you you have a negative covid um uh, PCR test, we call it, for the uh, antigens. And then mm -hmm. eventually you'll be able to get the what we call the IgG antibody test. And then that's the one that basically says your body now has a defense system against this virus. Mm -hmm. The thing we don't know because it's all novel is we don't know if that's for a lifetime or not. Like that's why the CDC said, eh, we're going to go with 90 days, which it throws a lot of, you know, things in a loophole. So um, I was trying to explain in my response to my cousin that, like, I don't require the negative test. <laughs> we, we are the Department of Health locally for our county. So, like, we're in the, like, the trenches. We understand everything about this and the science of it for, for what's being told to us um, from the CDC and from the Department of Health. So we, we don't need the negative test. We just need me to complete the time frame. Mm. And, and then I can go back to work. But that's where the whole the whole hitch was. I was telling my boss's boss, I was like, I haven't had a test yet. I'm like, and I would like to get this test over with. Because then as <laughs> they said to me, yes, because if you come back positive, you can't come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got to continue to stay home. So like this is part of the, the, the situation that people are facing out there, you know, is that they're, you know, and I basically told my cousin, I was like, I think by now a lot of employers have caught on to, well, a negative test is great. A negative mm -hmm. test can take a while to happen for anybody who's been mm -hmm. positive. And if you're prior to uh, contracting COVID and you get a negative test, so that's what happened with Jeff. Like he went on the Saturday, did the drive through swab. It came back negative. Well, that was on Saturday. So he had it, but his body hadn't, um, inside of his body, the virus hadn't replicated enough and grown to a detectable amount. By the time we got to Tuesday and he went to the VA and he had all these symptoms, he said he when he went in, he's like, I, I have to have it. How else? Like, why would I feel like shit, you know, and, and be sick? So he wasn't mm -hmm. surprised when he came back on later on Tuesday after he'd been there and left. And uh, they called him in the afternoon. Well, around four o'clock or whatever. And was like, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so right, yeah. that's been a whole thing. Wow. Uh, yeah. And. I've been blessed because my father, because of him going into um, having the fall back in July and then going into the hospital uh, for a short period of time, then going to the short-term rehab, and now he's at a different facility to which he's becoming a long-term resident. Um, I haven't been around him or any of that kind of stuff. I also haven't seen him in a very long time now, but that part has been you know, a blessing in my life because I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> However, mm -hmm. this month is uh, the end of his lease, so I'm supposed to be cleaning out his apartment and getting things out of there, but I can't do that because I'm stuck at home. <laughs> yep. So, and Ooh. I've been trying really hard to, like, follow the rules. Like, technically, I can go outside. Like, if I wanted to do yard work, if I wanted to take a walk in the neighborhood, you know what I mean? Like, I can do things, but the, the downside of the situation is you should really try to avoid any contact with anybody just in case. Just in case, yeah. So, like, you know, that's the and it, and luckily one of my friends called me the other day and was like, "Hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Do you need anything?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, wow, thank you for calling." And I was like, "Um, no, not necessarily. Like, I'm okay at the moment. Like, I'm stocked on food, and you know, the only thing I'm thinking about is laundry <laughs> because <laughs> I don't have a washer dryer here. I go to a laundromat, so I was like, mm, that might become an issue in a few days. Like, especially if I have to stay home another week." Fish or a week and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and my, but, my, my uh, facility laundry room is currently being renovated with new washers and dryers, so uh, they're still closed. So, but uh, considering I work from home, I don't use many clothes. Well, right. And, and so that's the thing is like, oh, and then get this, right? So, <laughs> sorry, I'll go on to this for a moment. For those of you that work at home, you may already have had to deal with this. Our employer is notifying us that because we use Zoom all the time now for a lot of our meetings and calls, that we are expected to be on camera. Mm -hmm. mm. So that requires at least something from about the chest up <laughs> for being yep. on camp <laughs> and looking somewhat put together, you know. Mm-hmm. And for, I'm like, fortunately for me, they gave me a Chromebox, but that a webcam, so I'm not required to have a camera. 
We right, don't use I mean, Zoom it, for obvious reasons. Right. But, but that's what cracks me up is so. that's been the biggest recent thing is everyone's like, you know, oh, so now they can just pop in and look at us anytime. And I'm like, eh. I used to work from home for many years. I don't care about any of that. Like, it doesn't bother me. Um, but it does amuse me because the very day when this was part of a, a bigger discussion, I was sitting over there in a big ass comfortable hooded sweatshirt <laughs> like and was not presentable at the moment like <laughs> I, was I like, have I have yeah um I've had I've thought about throwing a couple of just like my polo shirts in my office just to have because I can wear like a like a t-shirt and then just throw a polo shirt over it and I'm presentable um from the you know from the head up but normally like when i'm in my when i'm working from home i'm usually in like lounge pants or athletic shorts and t-shirts I, <laughs> and I, I just i just wear my lounge shirts that's pretty much it yeah so, well like, and again I don't, I don't need a camera so i can be shirtless through the entire day <laughs> well to be fair if like if like jeff and i you live alone yeah like your your dress code at your home is yours. Like if you have a partner, you have kids, like you have a multi-generational home, you have roommates, mm -hmm. any of those things, your circumstance may be slightly different. But I'm I I bet a lot of individuals like have modified mm -hmm. their at home attire or whatever. Oh, yeah. So I yeah. mean I've seen the jokes online where, you know, it's like on the Daily Show or whatever, and it's like they're wearing a button up shirt from here up and then they're wearing boxer shorts and like slippers from yeah you know, or whatever so they, there's there's even a commercial where where they, the guy thought they were going to be doing a zoom call and he's walking around in his underwear yep yep yeah so that's uh my quarantine story yay wow Woo. that's um, it folks <laughs> <laughs> now like so uh more to come uh in the near future whatever you know i'm I, uh, I I have already talked to Jeff uh, a bunch of times, obviously, you know, as my best friend and, and checking in on him. But I have a theory because I know the 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 timeline and I know who I've not directly met this person that exposed him, but I know some of the circumstances. And so we've been talking about the time and stuff. So I really feel that um, if I had stayed at their house a few more days, which wouldn't have been likely uh, – then I probably would have had a greater possible exposure. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll kind of see where things uh, shake out with that. But awesome. um, Jeff has been open about this on Facebook. So I waited until he said something, um, and I feel bad because I didn't say anything to anybody for a while. But my my reasoning was, what the fuck am I gonna say? My fat happy ass is sitting at home. Like I'm just working and like you know i mean like i'm not really doing anything special yeah. and i and i'm not sick like i don't have symptoms so like yeah. you know i wasn't gonna make it mysterious and be like i was exposed by somebody and then not be able to talk about like um so when he finally uh said something and i say finally because he waited for a few days um and then he started telling his whole story and and was very forthright about it um he revealed to me afterwards, I don't think this is speaking out of turn, that a lot of people have said to him, like, oh, my God, like, you're the first person I've known. And mm -hmm. which, you know, it's kind of that whole, like, domino effect thing. And so I, you know, I shared his post and was explaining about my circumstance so that my my social media people, uh, uh, really just Facebook, are aware of what's happening with me, friends, family, that kind of stuff, you know, coworkers and things were – coworkers were already aware. Um, but – you know, like we, Jeff and I had this conversation about like people, um, you know, that they that they, uh, you know, don't really know. And I was trying to explain to them statistically, um, like if if how did I I was trying to break down the numbers based on the total cases. And I said, basically, out of 100 people, I think you might know two to five people that like have had it. I'm okay. um, like, but so if you break it down again, you're like, OK, so for 50 people, I might know like one person so it's really not difficult to understand why people don't know somebody mm -hmm. um i'm in a very different perspective i'm seeing the data all the time so i see all the cases and everything so to me it's it's not running rampant like everybody has it mm -hmm. but i'm aware of all the names and the and the stuff and, and that kind of thing and i don't know who most of these people are if any of them but you know so it, it's a very different perspective to stuff so i get why people maybe aren't taking it seriously or are not um 
having relevance to it. But, you know, that's where Jeff and I talked about. And I told him, you know, I thought that it was a good thing that he was like, I am the face of it. Just so you know, here's mm-hmm. my circumstance, you know, and he's, um, you know, he's not in a really bad situation, but he did not get the top of the skating by either. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Um, the hospital stay was, you know, a, a serious thing for to be dealing with, you know, when he's on on the recovery, but it could be quite a while for him to um and be to the good i i get perspective on like how quote-unquote rampant this is because i actually use the yahoo weather app i know this sounds weird but it, when you when you scroll down to it they actually have a section on the yahoo weather app that says covid virus latest and talks about your county your state the entire united states and it gives the totals and everything that they get reported for for that day and Mm -hmm. sure it's not giving any data about like the specific people but like on on here it says for today confirmed cases in the united states fifty thousand six hundred and fifty nine yep and that's just today Mm -hmm. right well, and so like in, in Pennsylvania, we launched something called COVID Alert PA, which is an app. I've been using it since, uh, I don't know, it'll tell me here in a second, since about September 22nd. So for a couple of weeks now, um, as soon as it launched, I ended up getting it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, what it's doing is, is it's uh, not tracking you, uh, but it uses low energy Bluetooth to be aware of other devices that also have the app on them. And here's the reason why. If someone that I've been in contact with comes up positive, the app will alert me. But Mm. it requires both of us to have had the app on our devices. Mm. So, and it doesn't ping and it doesn't tell me anything. So let's say that it, like the example with Jeff, like if he had the app and I had the app, like it would have pinged and told me, but it wouldn't tell me who Jeff is and it wouldn't tell me where and when. It would just tell me that I was in contact with someone and that I will most likely be contacted by my Department of Health um, mm-hmm. and do contact tracing type stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it's a it's a technology way to kind of do this. Now, this, this isn't a new concept. This has been done in other countries. Um, some countries almost have it mandatory that it's to be used along with other uh, medication items. So, yeah, there's there's lots of different things in that case. Um, and then what I like about our version is like it says how many check-ins there are today, how many are reporting, um, how many total cases, total deaths, um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's um, it's pretty neat. But you know, I'm a data person, so you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. So yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, That's what's been going on with me. <laughs> Spending an hour doing that. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, try to uh, whip right through this. <laughs> Gary, what little has been happening over in the Facebook land? <laughs> so, um, not in Facebook, but in its uh, other company, Instagram. We got a new follower, <laughs> someone by the name of Pupzio. Hmm. 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 Maybe that could be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Damon. Yeah. What's been going on? Uh, we got a new YouTube subscriber. Um, I'm gonna say this as Jesus. You better work. Love the name. Don't know who you are, but I love the name. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then we got a few comments on some videos. Um. On 568, um, what's going on for August 2020, um, King R2K commented, um, good topics, this video, great stuff, guys. Yay. On, um, oh, you oh, episode eight. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> C-O-L-B-N-D, episode eight, On the Road, part two, Owen commented. Um, another good name for this would be Bear Dens and Dragons. Bear Dens and Dragons. <laughs> Uh, and, and I think part of it is 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 it keeps the same number of syllables mm-hmm. uh, from Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, the, the Bear Bear Dungeons and Dragons. 
Baratons and dragons. Okay. Yeah. And then on um, COL 571, which was our Alti No Shade um, pedestal to cancel, um, Addendum Mushi Combinant. Um, I didn't like this episode. Cancel culture is not a real thing because it doesn't it doesn't apply to melanin deficient people. Um. Ooh. <laughs> so, no, because here's the thing. When I read that comment, I was like, and I, ooh. <laughs> uh, I don't disagree. I got I got nothing. Like, yeah. I'm, I, 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 mm. We're going to move on. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. I, we're going to move on. I, I, <laughs> I, response. I think it's a completely valid like comment. I don't take it as a criticism. I take it as a as kind of like a statement of fact. Like the sun rises in the morning. You know? Like I was like <laughs> yeah. Like I, 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 I see it. it as yeah. It's, I, I look at it and I'm like well that doesn't really well it's uh, it, it but just let, let's, it, let's move on. It's, let's it, move on. <laughs> it's like a I'm trying to argue against it, being like, but this but isn't really what the episode. Right. No, well, right. But oh, it, uh, yeah. It's like it's one of those like I don't think that's quite right. I just can't. I can't argue. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, yeah, and it's also kind of not our place to argue it. Yeah, well, it's yeah, kind yeah. of like when people talk about racism. Like, yeah, it, 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 it's I like, really what, can't. What do you mean? Say sure, it, it doesn't. Wait. Uh, mm. uh, uh, anyway, moving on. <laughs> it, it's like I'm totally <laughs> shut down, and I'm like, okay. yeah, just like <laughs> Jeff.exe has not <laughs> <functioned. laughs> like <laughs> 404 <Error>. yeah. <laughs> For for our argument not found. Yep. Mm. <laughs> but there's a link. Um, but that is that's that's something. Um ooh, that is something. Anyway. Yeah. 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 That's, All that, right. That's so Jeff. Yeah, that's Jeff. that's throwing some some yeah. some tea for sure. Anyways. Uh over on Twitter we got uh D D S M M S D Nice Palander. Uh twenty eighteen. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that's palindrome for, but still. Uh, Bear Doc Glass and uh, Sergio X, 1982-44-65. Nice. I, I, 1982 sounds like a year thing, but 44-65, I don't get. Because, you know, this whole like numbers at the end of the thing, so I thought we were over that. Maybe we'll get stuff. Uh, apparently time. not. That's 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 all, all all I have to say about the numbers thing, especially when it's getting long. Like sometimes I understand the twos or if it's significance because of some sort of year thing, I can understand that. But when you're what recent shows did numbers, we have? Anyway, Gary, what 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 did the month of September look like when it came to our shows? Uh, well, we did a couple of shows. We did our What's Going On uh, for the month of August. We did a Let's Talk About Sex, where we talked about sex bubbles or sex pods, as they're known. Since that episode, that has come up a bunch of times like among some people I know, which cracked me up to no end. <laughs> not that not that they're creating them or having them, just the, just the wording. I was like, oh, maybe this is becoming a thing. Like, people are, you it's know. It's a thing. Well, and, 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 and to be fair, the bubble, because I even hear it during uh, some sporting, like I, I think it was like the U.S. Open tournament or something, they were talking about the bubble. Where, well, where they would, they would it, I mean, it has nothing to do with, in this case, doesn't have anything to do with sex, although, right. because it, it can involve like partners of players. Uh, right. uh, it, it could involve sex, but not the purpose of the bubble. Um, the people that right. could attend the tournament were like uh, uh, one of the players' families. They were allowed into the bubble of like only these people will be allowed to to enter right. the thing. So, um, uh, it, in addition to sex bubbles slash pods, there's social bubble right. pops. So, which is well, the same philosophy, the just not strictly dealing with sex. So that's also been done in the entertainment industry where like to create 
a film or a television show, like this is stuff I've been reading up on, they're creating these bubbles. So everybody gets to go in together, like uh, Penn, Gillette, uh, like, you know, Penn and Teller from the Magic Duo in Vegas. Their show has been shut down for a long time. They're actually in a bubble currently because they're working on new Magic acts. But in order to do that, they had to test beforehand, be negative. And now they're the only two in their bubble like exclusively working on stuff for an extended period of time. So they're not going to have contact with their families and stuff, things like that. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. Then the next week we did, let's talk about food, pumpkin spice. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, and then we just kept the controversy rolling and we did an all tea, no shade last week, episode 571, pedestal to cancel, talking about how people that we look up to uh, have a fall from grace of sorts um, and how we feel about that. I will say this. I was not prepared for the COL entourage discussion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that came out of that. Um, and I am not complaining or critiquing. I was actually quite happy yeah. Uh, thrilled even to see the, the discussion that's going on. Now, that being said, Lloyd did say in the chat a moment ago, please talk about more controversial things so I can have terrible conversations in the entourage. Uh, <laughs> Which is let's just say opinion, this. They weren't terrible you know. con conversations. It was a little heated, I, I would have to say. But in the end, it was relatively civil. He, well, he, right, he could be I heated think... and civil. I think the good takeaway point of that discussion was who here knows somebody who was on the front line of this issue? Mm -hmm. Like, cause that's really what it comes down to. It's, it's kind of like our earlier comment we were talking about where we can't say something like, I don't really get to have a, a voice on racism because I benefit from it as opposed to it being like against me. So I also can't say things on behalf of, trans individuals because I'm not one of them and I don't have a, a close, you know, confident friend, acquaintance that is that can like illuminate me on things. So mm -hmm. I tend to be one that's like, you know what, just like I don't really have an opinion about women's health rights other than I think they should have them to do with what they want. You know, I'm not, a, I don't have a woman's body, you know, like, so th mm -hmm. there's those things I feel that, um, are, that's kind of been more my stance. So it was very interesting. Uh, Lloyd, your point is taken. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not sure why you're raising your hand, but um, so yeah, I um, there is another uh, topic, actually kind of a return to a previously discussed topic that we might be doing in the near future. Um, so that may not be the end of, or, you know, the hiatus of Alti Doshe that may be coming right again soon. So we'll, we'll have see. another conversation, I'm sure. It was just, I was, it was funny. I was, I was at work when it all kind of was starting to go down and my phone would not stop buzzing. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I kind of <laughs> glanced down and I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. oh. Um, <laughs> like, I had, I, right. I, I had the sounds I on in my had, Apple watch. It goes, ding, ding. Yeah. I didn't have it that much, but um, I do have the chat so that it buzzes my phone when it goes off. And I had to like, not only did I have to like take my phone and turn it around, turn like the, fa the um, face down, mm -hmm. but I had to take it away from my desk because next to my desk is a metal file cabinet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't sit Look it on the me. file cabinet because it's just, mm, mm, and I'm like, well, okay, so we're just gonna, so I have, fortunately I have a box like behind me that I kind of set my phone off for a little while. Sorry, folks. I did read everything, though. And, yeah. Thank you all for that conversation because it is... We'd like you Good. talking... Let's see. Yeah. We'd like you talking about the the, the yeah. topics or what we talk about on the show. We'd, we'd like to see right. a discussion about what's happening on the show. Strangely enough, it's a heated topic that ended up well, being talked about in the show, which kind of had a heated conversation. I felt it was people bouncing ideas back and forth and, and really right. discussing it. That's how I was taking it. 
uh it didn't feel like like people were was uh uh, 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 uh uh shit storming anything it was just having a a meaningful conversation about mm. it uh which still can put some people's hackles up and and you know uh, get get angry and stuff but at least what i felt was it was a very deep and insightful and people explaining their situation uh right. or how they how they viewed it and having that that meaningful conver conversation in the chat um was actually really exciting uh, uh to it and it was probably just because it was a hot topic but i don't know well so for just for the record like long 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 time ago i muted the sewell entourage and telegram it, uh, for notifications for me because there was a previous time where people posted a lot of content like like pretty quickly and i just couldn't keep up with like all the notifications mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. at that time it was a lot of like very explicit adult stuff which i am not approved about but <laughs> I was it's, like, it's approved, but I just don't need to be notified every single time. That right, like I don't need my phone constantly going off about all the all the you know stuff. Um, so it's, I've left it like that ever since then. So I didn't know about anything that was going on, and then I opened the app, and it's like forty four notifications, and I was like, "Whoa, okay, <laughs> something happened." And then reading it all, I thought it was I thought it was good in the concept of of debate, like and education like some people were pointing out things to other people to say this is a source this is a thing read that like you know so yeah. to me that's important because engaging in that way is how we can work together collectively as human beings to help make sure that people understand a point of view it doesn't mean you're going to agree with it and i think it's the biggest takeaway is that you know, some people I think may have felt at the end of it that they weren't in agreement. And while that may be dissatisfying to one side or the other, because maybe they think they want to win over the other person, I've learned, I at least am happy that the that the dialogue, that the, the opportunity exists as opposed to just not at all. Mm. So yeah. I, I would rather like have a conversation with someone like I just had a conversation with a coworker who revealed to me that they don't know who they're voting for. And I was shocked um, <laughs> because I thought I already knew them well enough to know how they were going to vote. And then they said something and I was like, really? I was like, OK, so I made a very brief comment about how I feel right now in America, people are in one of two camps. Like, you pretty much know who you're going to vote for. And the fact that you don't know who you're going to vote for is surprising to me because so much has come about in our politics, especially of this year specifically, that I feel like you know where you stand on issues. And mm -hmm. you would know where these candidates stand. Therefore, you would make your alignment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, in interesting stuff. So. More potentially and to come on that. More to come. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> so let's distract you with some peen. Oh, okay. So we're going to do a little bit of this. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> mainly because uh, uh, I kind of like right. those uh, uh, claims. By the way, those claims that we get uh, are just claims. They're not strikes. So it doesn't really affect us too much. It just means we can't right. advertise, which we're not doing in the first place. Well, well my favorite part of... is any any revenue from the YouTube advertising on our videos, they get it. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> we're like, your, you get it in the first place. One hundredth of a penny. Anyways, yeah. moving on. Uh, so mine is uh, uh, one of my favorite people on, on uh, uh, Twitter. Um, he's, uh, uh, he, he, he's adorable. Yeah. I'm just going to say this. He, he's just fucking adorable and it's chunk. Um, and it's a video. He says, waiting for food, need belly rubs. Uh, uh, what's new? And he's just shirtless, uh, mainly because I do see a little bit of his shorts. Um, and, uh, he, uh, uh, rubs his belly. And then he gives a, a cute 
wink with a little tongue sticking out, and it's just adorable. Yes. Yes, very cute. Because he's fucking adorable. Yes, it is. Yes, he is. I, I, I <laughs> like his more explicit stuff as well, but, I mean, just just seeing him just makes me go, oh, it's cute, I want to eat him up. Oh, why is everybody cuddle? Mm-hmm. Anyways. So it's not... It's, it's kind of thirst. I don't know what to necessarily call it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's mine. Short, sweet, to the point. Yep. And you don't have to go far to get more of his, his other parts. Oh, no, you don't. No. Nope. Nope. Mm-hmm. nope. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, moving on. Uh, 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 David. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Husband walked by. Yes. Our partner. So I titled this. Um, I titled this "Red Beard the Butt Pirate." Um, this is um, Ginger underscore Fox um, or Daddy Fox from Twitter, mm. um, and he's like, "I love how weird my beard. I love how red my beard looks in this picture." Morning, boys, and he's in a. Um, very well done harness, um, jock strap combo, leather hunter strap strap combo. Um, and he looks fucking amazing. Like, yeah. I wonder if the, it's the, the red trim helps bring out the beard. I don't know. Cause there's not a lot of it. I mean, it's all over, but you know, it's, it's, it's slight there. Um, slightly there. It may have just been a good beard day. Also that, you know. Um, but Ginger Fox is, I've been following him for a long time. I think he lives in the UK. Um, pretty sure. Load, 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 load. Click. Yes, Manchester, yes. So, yeah. And he's just, he's super fucking hot. Yeah. Hot, 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 hot. He's got a mohawk. Mm-hmm. The actual, like, Lloyd. Damn. What? What did Lloyd say? He's being a shady in the live chat. Oh, look, a man in a harness, and suddenly Damon is interested. Who would have Oh! <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Lloyd. She got your number. <laughs> She calling you right now, uh-huh. Lloyd. <laughs> it's I, I thought. It's I thought. I mean, yeah. But <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just scrolling through his Twitter feed, and uh, uh, and he's uh, cute, adorable, and stuff. But uh, I'm not finding it all too much that that I want to follow. But that's okay. Well, yeah, he's, got, he's, he's got he's got some periodic good posts, but he, yeah. he's more than just periodic good posts. Oh, he's good. Uh, or or uh, posts I'm interested in. And then um, his partner also. So just, you know, go look at his partner's post, his Inky Cub partner, who does um, artwork. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's definitely it. Um, yeah. Anyway, go ahead, moving right along. Thanks for the say, Lloyd. Gary? We might Sorry. have some words. I was, <laughs> I was still looking at some stuff. Um, so I, I have two quick tweets. Um, why is this not like, hello, open. Why are you not opening? Uh, the first one is titled, But It Breaks Lore. So as uh-huh. a non-D&D gamer, at least that's oh. what I'm myself, I read this and I could not hit retweet fast enough because it cracked my ass up and is so true (laughs) because the (laughs) quote it's it's all text it's a quote it says but it breaks lore for elves to be black end quote (laughs) and then underneath that it says now hear me out counterpoint you're racist goodbye yep (laughs) 
Because <laughs> I was like, thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, like, why can't just... why can't L's, I don't understand why can't L's be be black? That's the point. I, I don't That's understand it. It's like just because people, they're known so to be get, a lot of people consider fair skin. What about like like may, may, maybe they get a lot of sun or something, and and, and they, they they're quite dark. Well, but that's like saying what, all this... orcs are green. Yeah. Let me just. I'm gonna just. They're not. Yeah. Like but brush it's... your non-existent hair out of the way. Yeah. Not my hair. Not just hair out of the way. <laughs> <sighs> I think it is so hilarious how people are throwing race on a fantastical setting. Like just point by period. Like so true. throwing like like fit like race on a fantastical setting like and other things too but like in particular in this particular post and for this particular post that's the big thing like you know yes elves can be black they can also be asian they can be uh, from japan they could be hispanic whatever like you're literally putting characters together and throwing them into a world that you put that someone creates for you like it's it's not that hard. Like Jeff, your 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 um your dragonborn daddy kind of type. I know he's not really a daddy yet, but right, you know right, what right. I mean. Like that, like like but you know that idea. Like 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 you could do that, and it's okay. Like that's sort of like it doesn't really matter. Like if you're okay with it, if your friends are okay with it, if your DM's okay with it, then <laughs> whatever. Um. So yeah. I, I I'm gonna stop down or jump down from my pedestal real quick because that's just like or my podium real quick because that's like a big thing like it's fantasy mm -hmm. like I just last night watched the um, um Frozen two you know we've got Disney Plus so I just watched Frozen two and I was just like oh this is really cool mm -hmm. and it didn't bother me one bit that there were people of color in this like fantastical land that is make believe. Right. Anyway, we went right along. Spo spoiler <laughs> spoiler alert. In Frozen 2, there is a whole uh community of indigenous people. Yeah. And that I thought was refreshing. It was actually quite pleasant. Um yeah. you know, because not everyone is white. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, and and like I, I was just watching a, a recent YouTube uh, video. Um, it's the gentleman that you guys talked about before that had the three part series. Mm -hmm. um, I subscribe to him, James, and uh, he does some really fascinating stuff. Actually, I would mm -hmm. love to have him on as a guest um, to talk about like how all the work he puts into the things that he posts about. But he does this brilliant expose about Disney and and the queer aspect of disney and um how there's been like subtext of language and representation and not representation and so it was so good um but anyways yeah like like yes like i see where lloyd is commenting in our <laughs> in our thread and one of them is i'm just staying true to the lore quote unquote um what my response to that is fuck your lore like <laughs> Because here's the thing, like, and I'm I'm just as guilty of this as anything else. Like, you know, Star mm. Wars is not great as a you know as a fantastical concept because there's not many people of color in it. Yes, there are aliens, not the same thing. Um, so like, there's there's a lot of stuff that can be improved upon. The reality is we are not lifting up the representation. It's very slow going. It is very painful. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of work to be done. That's kind of how i look at it at this point yeah um you know like you know what we there's so many different things that need to be worked on for representation so that you know is uh is kind of in the work so anyways that was the first thing that i saw that i really liked and then sort of not really tied into that um i wanted to also give a shout out to so and i don't really have the whole context for this but mm -hmm. a bunch of people ended up sharing it and i really love it it's a website called savagex.com it's lingerie by rihanna as mm -hmm. in like the pop star rihanna mm -hmm. and people have been losing their shit because there is a big like person of color represented 
like mm-hmm. in the boxer shorts, who's got a whole bunch of ache on them, got boobs, like got a belly, got stretch mm-hmm. marks, like yep. <laughs> yeah, people yeah. people done lost their shit about this, deservedly so because I was like, who dat? Like, uh, you know, I listened to a podcast. Um, hang on. Let me think about what the hell the name of it is, because uh, my brain is blanking at the moment. Uh, the, 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 the heavy conversation mm-hmm. um, with Bruce and Jody, and uh, so Bruce um, has an online uh, thing that he does called Chubster, which is a website community that he created about bigger people. And then Jody is part of the uh, him and his husband Bjorn created uh, Bearskin Underwear uh, mm-hmm. apparel line. And so I listen to their podcast. They have nice short podcast episodes that they put out and they talk about being a big person in a big world as their tagline. And so this is one of the things they talk about is how they're not very many representatives of big models in the actual attire that's made. And the problem is, is that you don't see yourself. So you don't know whether or not you can even wear the items um, in terms of modeling. So this was a big, big deal. Um, and what's crazy sort of not crazy but what's great about it is that there is this big boy right next to and i'm gonna probably get this wrong this guy looks like a model and i want to say it's tay diggs no it's uh, like it, i'm not it saying be, it is him but i think it might be tyson beckford ah tyson beckford okay see it might be but i could be wrong i i, could, I can um, see where you get to get uh tay diggs from yeah I mean, but I'm not, I'm not that familiar with, uh, black male models. I'll put it that way. So I was like, you look familiar. I don't know you, but what I love is the two of them being side by side, mm-hmm. like in representation, like here is what we consider an, unfortunately an American standard model representation. And then here is what we seem need to see more of. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, no, I don't think it's Tyson. I'm just sorry. As I look up, look him up on. Um, um, Google real quick. It might not be Tyson. It doesn't matter, but I get what you mean. Like that's right. sort of the idea. Like, right. My favorite. The comment threads have been killing me. <laughs> so we shopping now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, true. Um, you know, we stand plus size bottles. Um, yeah. You know. We, yeah, we yeah, stand yeah. plus size male models, but belonging uh, female plus size models, which is bullshit too. Although I have seen some, some I, like, oh, I don't remember who it, who does it, but there's like a, a women's leggings company. Um, it, and the leggings are really stylish; they look really cool. But uh, in some of their ads, they have a plus size woman as as part of the group of women that they show it being like yeah. look we've got stuff for everybody and right. i'm like you go girl one of my favorite comments i actually saw was a, a gentleman said um before you dm me know that my body looks like this mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what representation is about like making that thing known i think that's why i'm liking twitter more now than i have in the past even probably more so than tumblr because tumblr i felt like was becoming a lot of porn and i mean porn like produced where Mm -hmm. i've been culling my twitter on purpose because i'm seeing a lot more like bigger guys themselves not produced um Mm -hmm. and it's been quite uh enjoyable and refreshing so there's that jeff all right, moving on to the links. Um, honestly, I will say this: I link this not because I've seen it, but because I've I heard that it's out, and that's Carbon San Diego's mm. season three. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, if 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 you weren't a child of the eighties, <laughs> you may not understand that there was a video game series. Uh, which started off with where in the world was Carmen San Diego. It was a very simple and relative, I would actually have to say, say, uh, uh, educational uh, type of a game where you're a detective trying to track down uh, a villain of vile uh, and uh, 
uh, and Vile is run by uh, a woman named Carmen San Diego, who is in this uh, red, uh, uh, I don't know what type of hat it's called, but fedora. it's wide brim fedora. It's right. wide. It's really wide brim for a fedora too, uh, <laughs> which is and and a, a red coat. And she was she would like she and and her her accomplices. Uh, 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 had a whole bunch of uh, 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 weird things, like somebody stole the uh, Eiffel Tower or the the, the uh, uh, Statue of Liberty, and they mm -hmm, always mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. There was always some sort of uh, hint to where they went to, and you'd have to go through certain things, and you'd be like, travel to one of this, these places based off of this clue. It's very geographical. Eventually. <laughs> There was a game show created from it called Where in the World is Carbon San Diego, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Rockapella did a really awesome theme song for. There was even a cartoon called Where on Earth is Carbon San Diego. And mm -hmm. then Netflix, a few years ago, started, had uh, hired on uh, to do a cartoon uh, for Carbon San Diego, where Carbon San Diego in this isn't part of vile she's stopping vile but she's still thieving in a weird way interesting yeah. it, it's an interesting concept makes you really really like carmen san diego uh mm -hmm. instead of her being the villain um but uh um and they've had a couple se two seasons already and the third one those who are fans of critical role one of the voices is liam o'brien mm-hmm um, those who are fans of Rao, <laughs> wow, it's Illidan Stormrange, <laughs> Liam O'Brien, um, which yeah, I didn't watch it because of Liam O'Brien, I, I was just watching it because it's Carmen San Diego, and I'm like, wait a minute, that voice sounds awfully familiar, and I look it up and I'm like, it is, it's Liam, and I'm, I got super excited, and the show is brilliant, it's awesome, it's amazing, if you have not seen the first two seasons, hey, it's Netflix. You can watch all three seasons, and yep. I will. I will tell you this. I almost guarantee you will uh, enjoy it. it. Is funny, interesting, semi-educational. I mean, it's still, you know, it's kind of a kids show, uh, but it's, it's still. I think anybody who grew up with Carmen San Diego or just just likes uh, interesting uh, um, things as action. It has, uh, uh, it even has moments where they talk about like some of the treasures that are being sto are stolen or are going to be stolen. Um, it's, it's, it's a great show. Mm -hmm. So I haven't cool. actually watched season three yet. I have watched seasons one and two. So I'm just like, yes, I just can't wait until they do the next season of Dragon Prince if they ever do. That's another matter well, altogether. I appreciate you posting it, Jeff, because I didn't realize they they made it, they reiterated into a new animated uh, series. So I might check it out because yeah, this is a Netflix original series. Yeah, cool. Speaking of animated series and things, uh, my first pick of the two as we get ready to wrap up the show is Star Trek Lower Decks on CBS All Access. Um, I like both Star Trek and Star Wars, like universes, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and into them. So, I was hesitant about this concept of a <laughs> animated comedy. series, right? A comedy about uh Star Trek because I was like, didn't Seth MacFarlane just do a whole series like <laughs> spoofing? Like as a live action, and I can't mm -hmm. remember what the name of that show is. Um, oh gosh, I, it literally just left my I head. Heard it was really really good. Good. The Orville is the ship. Orville. Yeah, Orville. yeah, that's it. that's yeah. what it's called, Orville. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched any of it only because I just don't know as a fan, as a low level fan of these two genres, if I'm in the mood to watch someone poke fun at them. Mm -hmm. um, so I was hesitant with this. I will say I love this show because it is so irreverent, but not in a like a bad adult way. Like it's not um, Adult Swim. 
It's okay. It's fun because basically one character is the protagonist. You find out through the course of the season why they behave the way they behave because they're they're kind of a badass, but they're also a real pain in the ass and they don't like following the rules and they're constantly getting into trouble. And it gets revealed that I want to give it away through the course of the season why they are the way they are. Um, okay. It's done really well. Like it's it, I I really like the animation style. I like the writing. And what I find hysterical is that it pokes fun as its own universe. Mm. So when they make their own internal referencing about like, oh, obviously the Enterprise would take care of this mission. Like, I mean, when they say shit like that, I'm like, wow. I'm like, okay. <laughs> For the first time ever, Star Trek has a fucking sense of humor about itself. Ooh. Because they really seem to be so uh, self preservential like in a mm -hmm, weird way mm -hmm, i always feel mm -hmm. like it's oh well we can't do <laughs> it's like and, and where star wars on the other hand has always been like ah whatever like we don't give a fuck like have fun with our you know our shit mm -hmm. so i've always felt like star wars is much more welcoming to the fandom and like and what it does and the stuff that it creates and stuff like that and i feel like star trek has been much more like oh no no no, no property rights you know trademark copyright claim so the fact that they went this way in, a, in an adventure is really appealing. I hope it continues on and that it gets more seasons because honestly, it's fun. Like, and, and it's uh, episodic. It's once a week, and I enjoy looking forward to watching. It's like half hour episode. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's that. Especially because it's from the people who own the right rights, and right. They, and they they wanted to do something that was that was different. Provide, hey, we've got this this property. Let's do more with it. That might bring in some other types of audiences. So. Those audiences right. that weren't into the big uh, things about about the actual series or Discovery, which is right, very different, um, that they could at least kind of bring that as a a homage, but keep that lightheartedness. Because I don't know about you, even if even though the the regular series were all serious, there's got to be some funny shit going on somewhere, <laughs> right? And and so. And the Star Trek Lower Decks takes place in the next gen timeline. Mm -hmm. So like okay. the, the uniform dress and everything is from next gen era. So um and next gen is not my season. Like of all mm -hmm. of all the seasons, all the all the series I should You're say. A Voyager of, right. right. I'm I'm an absolute Catherine Janeway, there's coffee in that nebula, like <laughs> yeah, like mm -hmm. fan, even though that series in and of itself has several problems yeah. um well they all have problems but we won't get into that they do but i i appreciate it was the first female captain they were in an unknown charted area like trying to get home that was the big thing i really liked about it but so anyways uh so i suggest that people check this out and lastly i want to get to the thing um and try not to talk about it too much if you remember me previously talking about i think during the power hour about the adult video game that was going to get released mm -hmm. that takes place kind of in a um uh D, D like uh medieval kind of era concept um mm -hmm. it's called robin morningwood adventure the welcomes secret uh it has released on october 1st um it was originally meant to release as a patreon access so what that means is as a patron you could get the game, download it, and then depending on the level that you pick, you would get the updates. But Patreon, and I don't know why, there was a delay, they they reviewed it, then they said it wasn't ready. They wouldn't let them launch, and so it took like a day to get launched. In the meantime, they made it publicly available to outright purchase, which is what I did. Um, and because I publicly outright purchased, I automatically get the updates. I've been playing it since it was released. Um, I have not completed the game because I'm taking my time with it a couple hours a day. Uh, it's fun. It's heart touching. Like I wasn't ready for the <laughs> aww, like moments. Um, the whole concept basically is that you are Robin Morningwood. You happen upon a village that is legendary in which it is full of nothing but men. And the way you battle is to have sex with other men and you make relationships and you uh, learn about a lot of the other men and their sexual activities. Um, there's a king yeah. who is cursed. Uh, I'm imagining he's like the big boss eventually at the very end that you have to try to have, have sex with. Um, you can manufacture cock rings, butt plugs. <laughs> um, 
Like there's there's shit. Wait like, a minute. Is, but, it, is, it, is that actually a mobile game you can get? Yes. Yes. So oh, what I have, it's, what it's I'm showing right now, because because it, there's no way that that uh, Apple would allow that on their platform. Well, this is so yeah, I do have an Android phone. This is the demo version. I don't have the full version. Um, I was playing it and I forgot to save, so that's on me. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. You wouldn't start... be able. I'm sure you wouldn't be able to show a good portion of the the game. Yeah, anyways. yeah. This right. is this is about what I can show. Although I'm. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. I, I started showing it and I'm like, I hope nothing shows up in that background. Uh, <laughs> right. But yeah, it's 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 fun. I would like I said I only got to the demo version. Um, I played it a little bit and then I, I forgot to save and then got mad because I couldn't. It, I thought it would I thought it was saving on as I was going along, but it wasn't. And then I realized, oh, how do you save? And I was like, well, fuck it, it's late at night. I started literally like playing it at like eleven o'clock, and I could not stop for an hour or so because it's just kind of cute. And. I've I usually go in three to four hours at a time and I usually have to stop because I get tired mm -hmm. like, and I get frustrated because there are puzzle games within it and I keep sucking at the puzzle games, like <laughs> meaning like I do okay and then I get worse and then I'm like, all right, I get, I'm getting mad and cranky <laughs> and I'm tired. My brain isn't functioning. I need to stop playing the game like and step away. Um, but yeah, there's some really interesting things. I just like for anybody who's already been playing the game, I just had the the festival moment. Mm -hmm. Um I can't really say anything more about about this context, but like this game is kind of wild. Um I would love to have the the people who created it on there, two main guys that have created it. I think they're both abroad though. Like and because French and English are the two main languages, I have a feeling the one of them is definitely in France. Um so I don't know if we how we would make that work, but I I really suggest that people come check it out. So there are going to be two links uh, on our website. It's to the actual um, website for the game, which is through itchio it itchio um, as a website, which like is kind of like a gaming uh, community thing online, I believe. And then there's also the Patreon for uh, under Grizzly Gamer, which is the name of the company um, that ended up releasing uh, replacing it. So mm. so it was. Uh, it's honestly been a lot of fun. Uh, they say it could take about 40 hours of gameplay to complete the game, but I think they mean if you don't the, do the side quest stuff. Um, if you just like stick to the main storyline and try to go through. Um, they they know that there are bugs. They have a great like forum thread that you can join and kind of tell them there have been little like word gaffes here and there, language barrier stuff, um, and uh, different things like you know. So they seem to be pretty receptive to things. People are like having um, some issues. Just and this is a personality thing, honestly. They're like kind of like complaining about this or that. One of the big things I see that people keep posting over and over again is like, is it going to come to Steam? And it's like people it's just a couple of folks like that yeah. are making this really fun animation style game possible. Give it a rest a little bit. Like, you know, this is not a major corporation and the fact that it's available on Android as a mobile platform and on windows and on Mac, like as a desktop to me is astounding. Mm -hmm. um, it's not available in, in the Mac and the iOS uh, mobile version or, or the Mac uh, app store. Right, so you can download um, it and install it separately for the Mac, but you can't like, right. go to the Mac App Store and find it. Just because Apple would not allow that on the platform, you can use it yeah. on your Mac Mac OS device, but right, not on through the App Store. Yeah, so uh, it's I I really recommend if people are interested, and the demo is fun to play in and of itself. I did that a few months ago, and you only get to a certain point in the story, and then it stops. Um, and it was a great idea that they did it. They've been campaigning for a long, long time. Uh, putting different stuff out there. Um, so, this is yeah. A, bringing like, a lot of lines of strange flesh. Except, yes. I mean, slightly different, you know, oeuvre, but still. Right. And strange flesh um, as a game, we've kind of talked about it before, is, is a one-nighter. Like, you could uh, you can easily play it's strange flesh with it, like, yeah, in an hour to two hours and you're done. Like, um, But you want the but, different endings. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Um, Strange Flesh was the first game that I ever played that was, like, sexy and, like, kind of turned me on, which I wasn't expecting. Um, and then this one, I was like, oh, okay, like, yeah, gonna gonna have to be ready for the horniness level to come out 
quite often. Um, it's uh, it's interesting. I I have not been reading into anything. I will say in terms of like gaming and mechanics, as I'm not really a game player, I find some things a little uh, challenging because I don't think some stuff is explained relatively easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's some expectation by people who created the game because their audience, their main audience probably are people who like automatically play games and that's dangerous because it goes a wide variety, like from people who don't know much to people who know way too much. And the people who know way too much, I think are much more critical than necessary. Um, It's kind of like the guy almost wrote to the one person on, on tweet on Twitter because I was so irritated. They were like, and uh, what I wanted to reply was you produce your own game, bitch, and then release it. And we'll see how you do. (laughs) <laughs> definitely Chill the fuck out. For a, that cannot be streamed on twitch but you could probably stream it on chatterbait uh i don't know chatterbait's really particular about what content you can show on cam okay maybe not anyway and you you also mentioned that you put in the link for for their patreon right Right, and their Patreon right now only has two levels, a $3 per month level and a $10 per month level. Uh, the $10 one is what gives you all the updates and some more exclusive stuff, including voting uh, for new development stuff. Eventually, the goal is when the game is completely finished, which is months and months away, um, then they will make it available for a complete purchase. They already did a Kickstarter pre campaign. People who did the Kickstarter get an exclusive character build in. I don't even know anything about that. Like So... It's been a long time in the works, um, and I'm really kind of excited to see like what they're doing and stuff. And I have a theory. Mm-hmm. This may be the beginning of a whole thing, because technically, when I pay attention to the name and the concept, I feel like that once they're done with this, if it does well, they might be willing to develop more in the same concept in the same world. But that's a whole like that's way down that's the road. Way down that's down. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hey, guess what, folks? That's the end. Finally. <laughs> One more longer episode, so I'll say. Uh, Playways, contact us, you and all of them. I'm just going to skip through that part. Uh, we've got merchandise. All of us are wearing something. Consensus by Foreplay, Sloppy Bottom 23, and of course, the regular logo shirts. And plus, there are other things. Uh, pop over to zapsle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We got our Patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud or entourage at tinygirl.com slash uh, telegram dash col. Everybody else, everywhere else where it comes out loud, uh, uh, you can subscribe us in many places. And I'm box at box, 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 cub, box, something or other on most platforms, uh, except on Twitch, where I'm Windjam, which is where we stream B, swarm, stream B and D. There we go. D&D with bears. Uh, we're currently uh, doing a bunch of. Uh, uh, we're doing three weeks of one shots, uh, battle royale, ah. which should be fun. Although there was some drama today, but hopefully that will be cleared up for next session. But okay, Damon. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79 on most bear related sites, or Facebook, or you can find me at pup underscore umbra on Twitter. Twitter is definitely not safe at work, kind of like this game. <laughs> okay. This game is not safe for work at all. Your Twitter. Yeah. Mostly no. not safe for work. <laughs> mostly. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabear73. Uh, that's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. Like, don't download this game onto your work phone. No. <laughs> Unless you work like in adult entertainment. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Example. Yeah. Adult. Yeah. Then you're fine. But, anyways, yeah. <laughs> say goodnight, everybody. Uh, let me play the thing. Good night, uh, everybody. Uh, we... we Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs>